Hello friends, this is Wendy with Love and Stamp and I'm excited that you're here with me today. We're gonna do something kind of fun. We're gonna make some backgrounds with your little stamps for our greeting cards. So here I have cut off the top of this using the basic borders dies to create, a, excuse me, a mask. And I'm going to tape this mask in place. Now you can use copy paper or whatever to create your mask. I just used um, what I had sitting there, which was some cardstock, probably not the most economical choice um, if you want to make a mask for something like this. So keep that in mind. Now I'm adding in a piece of my grid paper here. Um, this grid paper is not meant for the Stamparatus. It's a bigger piece, but it's what I had sitting next to me. So I used it. I am using post-it note tape and taping on the uh, mask so it will stay in place. And then I'm going to use my Misty to do some stamping. I'm trying to decide here how I want to position my Misty. It's a Stamparatus, not a Misty. <laughs> Same thing. So anyways, um, I am using my, my Stamparatus because I want to... Um, be able to restamp these images over and over um, and get a really good impression. So here I am placing everything that I want and realizing, okay, but I want to stamp this in a different color. So I remove it and we're going to use Parakeet Party to stamp these, uh, this greenery, and we're going to use Sweet Sorbet to stamp the flower. Now these are new Stampin' Up! in colors that have come out uh, for demonstrators. They will be available for everybody to purchase on May 3rd. So if you want to get these, um, I have a dog hair on my stamp, you know, that's what happens when you have four dogs. Sometimes you get dog hairs in wrong places. So uh, anyway, I'm just going to restamp this multiple times to make sure that it's getting really good coverage down at the edge. That's why I chose to use the stamp apparatus. Because when you have a mask, what will happen sometimes when you stamp is like right where the mask lays against the cardstock, um, it won't have a really good impression there. So if you wanna make sure you have a really good impression, a really good stamped image, I highly recommend using a stamp positioning tool so that you can just keep restamping. Okay, so then the rest of this is just gonna be me kind of figuring out where I want placement of everything to be and continuing to stamp to create this background. The way I did this video is to create my backgrounds first and then finish the cards out. So this video might seem a little bit all over the place, but this was the way it worked well for my brain. So that's why I did it this way. Now, the other thing I want to mention here is um, the stamp set that I'm using is called Framed Occasions. It is also a brand new stamp set available May 3rd. And I did use some stamp sets and stuff that is available to you now in the new catalog. But I wanted to take the opportunity to remind you that if you are um, like new around here, maybe you've never heard me say this, that you can be involved in getting your stuff early, pre-ordering and stuff like that if you purchase the Stampin' Up! starter kit. Now, a lot of people shy away from that for two reasons. One, they think that if they purchase the starter kit, that makes them a demonstrator like me that has to sell the product and try to run a business. That is not true. You do not have to do that, that is a choice. The other reason people shy away is a quarterly minimum. And I'm just gonna talk about it because you know, that's who I am. I'm just super transparent about these things. So there is a quarterly minimum with Stampin' Up! of $300 retail. What does retail mean? Well, we don't pay the retail price. When you are a demonstrator or discount shopper, whatever name you wanna put on it, you are only, you're getting 20% off of all your orders. Now I get 25% off because I've moved up a little in the ranks. So, but you can do that too. It's a really um, easy to get 25% off. So anyway, the bottom line is a lot of people purchase the starter kit and decide to shop at a discount and then they get all the other benefits of being a demonstrator, which is getting to shop early from catalogs, 
getting the catalogs early, getting to attend fun Stampin' Up! events. Um, there's going to be an event in November called On Stage, and that is something I'm attending in Anaheim, and I'm really excited for that. So um, it's just like a four or five hour event. So if you live near that area and you wanted to hook up and say hello, let me know. Um, but anyway, so that's basically all it entails to be a quote demonstrator is to purchase the starter kit and then you get the discount and then you get to shop early. And if you decided you wanted to try it as a business, you could, but there's zero requirement to do so. You don't have to attend any meetings. You don't have to do anything. Um, Stampin' Up! is pretty much like the easiest company ever to deal with, in my opinion. I, it, like, I, it's sometimes I hate that it's a direct sales company because I feel like direct sales gets such a bad name, and Stampin' Up! really isn't like direct sales other companies. That's why I'm part of it. So, um, you know, anyway, it's about people first and being part of a really awesome community, the stamp stamping community. Um, let's go back to the card really quick. By the way, before I leave this, because I know I probably won't come back to it. If you're interested in purchasing the starter kit, there is a link below the video. It's $99 plus tax. Shipping is free and you get to choose $125 in product. So you're getting $26 in product for free. Plus you'll get like access to this. You can purchase the new products now in your starter kit. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So here I'm going to remove my post-it note tape. And if you need post-it note tape, I do have a link for it below the video. Um, go to my Amazon craft store. There's a link there and you'll find it there. And then what we're going to do is I just want to take a little bit of ink and add it to the bottom of this. The reason for that is you want to have a little bit of a definition whenever you're creating a mask so that you know kind of what's happening. And you're going to see I'm going to even enhance this definition more later. But this is step one for this background. One of the tips I want to give you is you may have noticed I started with my larger images first. You really want to start with your larger images first and then begin filling in with your smaller images. That is how you end up with a background that is filled in really well. So for this background, I die cut a circle from the um, layering circles dies and then I'm placing this into my stamparatus just like I did with the last one and now we're going to fill this circle in with all kinds of cute stuff. We're using the cup of tea stamp set again another newbie coming May 3rd um, and I'm starting with my largest image as you can see here. So the whole point of this video is to show you how to make your own backgrounds a B, show you that you don't need to use all large images for backgrounds. You can grab a bunch of different stamp sets and see what kind of little bitty images you have in them to create kind of fun little backgrounds. And that's what I've done here. I really wanted to use some of those little stamps that are in my stamp sets that sometimes don't get enough play time. You know what I mean? Like we just, I don't know, I think we focus on the focal image in a stamp set, but then we don't use the smaller stuff. And this is a great way to use the smaller images. So I sped this entire video up um, to one and a half times its normal speed because the original video was like 40 minutes long. But I really didn't cut any footage out. And the reason for that is two things. One, we have to have story time and I can't do story time with a 15 minute video. It just doesn't happen. Two, um, I really wanted you to see the process involved in doing this. So I think sometimes when we watch videos and they have a lot of stuff cut out of them, it's it's a time saver tool for the person creating the video. I can remember one time I was told to never have a video over 15 minutes long because people get bored and they lose interest. I decided at some point in my Stampin' Up! time or my YouTube time, I should say, that I just didn't care. If somebody lost interest and didn't want to be here, that's okay. But for the for the five people, even if it's only five people that want to be here for the full thing that are here for whatever I do, I want to 
I want to be here with them. So um, anyway, years ago, if you go back in time in my videos, you'll notice that I used to have fairly short videos. They didn't have story time and it just wasn't who I was. I was, you know, trying to that's we can talk about that in story time anyways so here now that I've gotten all my lemons stamped with daffodil delight I'm coming in with that sweet sorbet which by the way this color is gorgeous it's like pink meets red it's beautiful anyways um I love it and here I'm filling in with the next largest image like we just talked about you know you really want to make sure you're working from your largest to your smallest images. And then the other thing you might notice is I'm doing a whole lot of stamping on the line. So when you're trying to create a background that has a definition line somewhere, you want to make sure that you're stamping over that line. You don't want to just try to stamp all inside that line because it's not going to have the right effect. So make sure you stamp over and on the outsides of the line. And here you can see I'm struggling a little, like where am I gonna stamp? Um, making decisions, decisions are hard. So this is not a practice that comes super easy to me. So if you're watching this and you're like, yeah, mine would never turn out like this or it wouldn't look that good or whatever, don't discount yourself, try it because Honestly, like this was not super easy for me. This was a, a little bit of a struggle for me. The last card I'm going to show you was really easy for me, but this one, um, this one was a little hard. I had a hard time figuring out where to stamp things. I didn't want it to look overcrowded, but I wanted to make sure there were no areas that had just like tons and tons of white space. So it's just about practice, 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 practice. And the more we practice stamping and the more we practice creating, the better we get at it. So as I'm watching my past self here stamp, I'm seeing my struggle. I'm like, oh, I'm having a really hard time getting enough stuff. I should have stamped another one of those greeneries down there at the bottom where I just stamped the blue piece, but that's okay. It is handmade. It is not Hallmark. I am not going to worry about it being perfect. I'm not going to worry about if somebody, nobody's going to look at this card and be like, oh, well, she didn't do enough uh, pattern stamping in this area. People don't care. They're just happy you gave them a card. And see, I went in here and I was like, well, I'm going to fill it in with one of these guys. So just try your hand at it and enjoy it and pick some really fun bright colors and do some masking with some stamping and you're going to have all these fun backgrounds to play with even if all you did was sat down one afternoon and made several backgrounds and you just didn't worry about anything else okay so here i'm taking a pen and now i'm going to trace all the way around this circle to give it some major definition and you're going to see when this whole card comes together it looks really cool that actually looks really cool the way it is right there. But um, I really love how this one ended up turning out. So here, it's probably my favorite of, I don't know, it's gonna be tough between this one and the raccoon. So here is my finished background for this one. So sit down one afternoon, you can sit down and you can just work on making a bunch of different backgrounds. And then when you are ready to put a card all the way together, you'll have lots of options to choose from. So that's something that's fun to do as well. Here, instead of doing a solid black line, I decided to do dash lines. And I absolutely love how it came out. I think it's so super cute. So that is an option as well. So there's two. And then the third background is this one over here, which you didn't see me make. Why? You're like, why, Wendy? Why didn't we see you make that? Oh, because my camera shut off and I didn't know it shut off. So I have the finished background and I have the rest of the card to show you, but I don't have the footage of me stamping the background. And here's the deal. I couldn't start over, folks. I didn't have the time nor the energy. And I was like, they'll be able to figure it out when we talk about the card because you're smart and I know you can. So here I'm stamping my sentiment in this hexagon and then I'm going to die cut this out using the, what are those called? Beautiful? Well, it's from the Hello Beautiful bundle, but the die set has a totally different name. 
and I can't recall it at the very moment, but it is listed over on my blog. So in the description below this video, there is a link to my blog and you can go over there for all the supplies and information about these cards with tips and tricks. There's no project sheet because there's really no measurements for these cards today. Um, so there's no project sheet to print, but the supply lists are there. So if you need any of these supplies, you can get them there. Except for, of course, the brand new products that are not available till May 3rd. Those are not listed over on my blog, but I'm going to go back in and update it once I can, once I can get the links for, for the new products. Okay. So this is it for this card. I am just going to add dimensionals to the back of this hexagon and then add it to my card. So this card will be finished. I'm not doing anything else to it. You could add some embellishments if you wanted to. Um, there's lots of other things you could add if you want to, but I just didn't really feel like it needed anything else. It was, it was cute, just like it was. Just simple, sweet, straightforward, cute. Okay, so that's that finished card. Now we're gonna move on to the one that you didn't see. Okay, the, the green one, the, rac the raccoon, Rocky the raccoon. So this one has a bunch of background stamping with the Hello Beautiful stamp set. All I did is I took a piece of Old Olive cardstock, I used Old Olive ink, and I stamped all a bunch of different images from that stamp set, the whole Hello Beautiful. Hello Beautiful is available now, so if you want it, you can get it. So I wanted to show you that. Um, oh, I need to cut that out. <laughs> and then um, here is Rocky the Raccoon. So the stamp set that I'm using here is called Wild and Sweet. I did not intend on getting this stamp set, but when I placed my demonstrator order, I had some free rewards from Stampin' Up for accomplishments and stuff. So I used it and ended up getting this thinking I'm going to try to use this set. So here we go. This is what's so funny. I ended up falling in madly in love with this. I am using Stampin' Write markers, which are a water-based marker from Stampin' Up to create my image. Okay. So we're starting out. I'm looking at the stamp set while I'm doing this and I'm trying to best detail out where the grass is and where my little raccoon is. Then I'm taking and used old olive to color the grass. Now I'm taking smoky slate and I'm coloring everywhere that Rocky raccoon is at and stamping, but that's not where it ends. Okay. So here's just your very basic image, but what you have to do is you have to keep building your layers because these images are hard to see when they're upside down, right? But look what happens. Look what happens. I start getting a lot of definition with um, continuing to add layers. And then I go in with black and here's where things really get good. I color his little face, his little mask, all in black. And I add some little black to his tail. Sorry about the uh, weird noise in the background. That's my puppy coming in the room. Look at this. Isn't that amazing? So I'm definitely creating a reel to show people how to do this because I just, I am madly in love with this technique. Now I want to do it with all the things. So it's gorgeous. I love how the raccoons coming together. And so I just continue adding layers. So here I'm darkening up the top of his head here. I'm like, Oh, under his chin needs to be a little darker. So I'm adding darker to that. Oh, look, his, you know, I want to have a little bit of shadow here on the side of him where his little tummy sticks out. And then I look at his tail and I'm like, he needs a little more love in his tail too. So I go in and I add a little more love in the tail and a little more love in the grass. And I, I mean, this seriously, like my favorite new stamping technique, I think, honestly, I it's probably not new. I know it's not new. I know uh, there's a hundred people out there that have done this, but for me, it's new. So I'm so excited about it. Okay. Let's have a few minutes of story time before we end. So for those of you who might be new around here, story time is when I just chit chat about things in my life. And if you don't care for that, that's okay. We don't, we won't hold it against you. But those of us who are friends like to hang out and do this. 
So um, what has happened since the last time we talked? We had Easter. I took a whole week off. Hadn't been on any videos with you guys. Um, and the break was glorious. Not from you, because I could hang out with you guys all day long. But from the work that goes into recording, editing, voiceovering, writing, blog posts, all of that. It is, I mean, it's work, you know? Like, I, you know, I can't say it's not. It is. I love doing it. But every once in a while, you need a break. So I took a real break. And um, it was great. So... That was fun. We hosted Easter. We had 40 people for Easter. We did have a little emergency um, during Easter. One of the kiddos ate something that caused him to have a serious re allergic reaction. He ended up going to the hospital. They ended up giving him an EpiPen shot and then sent him home with one. We think it's shellfish. Um, it's a friend of ours son but not 100% sure. So they've done allergy testing to figure out for sure what it is because clearly, you know, you don't want your child, you don't want your child going around with something that you don't know what they're allergic to, right? Okay, really quick back to the card here. I'm just putting together one of the other ones that I've made for you. And I use foam adhesive to pop up the word sending and it's gorgeous. You've got to get yourself some of that. There, it's a link. It there is a link to it over on my blog. Okay, so that happened and that was kind of scary. But other than that, it was a magical day. We had such a wonderful day. Um, the kids just, I don't know. They like they had fun. They Easter egg hunted. We had mostly teenagers or like preteens so you know how that is they're all too cool for school but they did really well they played together and hung out together and it just was a really nice day like we did two easter egg hunts for the youngers and the olders and then um we had great food plenty of food thank gosh i was really worried i wouldn't have enough food for everybody but it worked out fine so we had lots and lots of food and then um, this last week, we also celebrated my husband's birthday. So that was fun. He, um, we really didn't do anything, but I told you guys I got him the tickets to Jim Gaffigan. So I did give him his card with the tickets and um, he was really excited about that. He's very much looking forward. It's not till August, but um, it's near where we live-ish. It's like an hour away. So we're excited to get to go to that. So Anyway, he was happy with that. Um, we've had no more problems with Skeeter. So some of you who follow me on social media know that Skeeter got really sick. And she's my youngest, Vishla. I have two. She is um, 10 months, or no, sorry. She's, a, oh, oh my God, she's, she's going to be a year old this weekend. Anyways, she is doing great. She we gave her raw beef bones. It was just too much for her system. And she got put on a bunch of medications and got straightened out and probiotics and she's doing great. So really nothing crazy to report, just kind of like normal everyday life. Um, we did host 40 people for Easter and that was a lot of people. Um, I'm voiceovering this video on Friday, the day before you see it, and we are hosting another dinner tonight, but much more low key for some friend, uh, some friends, and one of them is somebody we haven't seen in forever. He moved out of state, so we're excited to see him and spend time with just some friends and hang out. Okay, so that's my finished sending sunshine to brighten your day card. This one is probably my favorite. I do love the raccoon card though, um, but gosh, that sending one is so pretty. So you tell me which one you like the best. I hope you try making your own little pattern backgrounds. If you do, make sure to share it with me. I love to see what you create. You can shop with me at shoploveandstampin.com. And if you want to see another video from me, click either one you see here. I'll talk to you guys again soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Stay inky. Bye-bye.